because we know that it is so important to be educated in trading. You know, a lot of people want to trade, but I always tell everyone, doesn't mean you should. And the only reason why you'll know if you should do it is you got to learn from the right people. So we got a big event going on for about three hours. Uh, you know, you definitely want to stick around for all of them. And, you know, once again, every presenter here, including Melissa, John Thomas, and myself, are going to make you guys and give you guys some great knowledge and an opportunity to walk away with uh, some very, very good specials at the end of the presentation because we all know we want to learn how to trade, and that's what it's all about. So let me bring in my first guest um, that is going to start off and, and, and kick off the Cyber Expo of February 2020 is Melissa Armo. Now, Melissa, I've known a while from Melissa. You've probably seen her a lot. Uh, Melissa is obviously the founder and owner of International Education Company. She's teach. Uh, people how to successfully trade in the stock market. She teaches more of the strategies, the golden gaps. And, uh, you know, once again, she's the founder of the company of the stock swoosh. Now you've probably seen her many of times. She has, she basically runs her own TV show titled make a million, uh, with Melissa. And she's also appeared on some of the greatest TV shows, one of the biggest financial shows in the industry. I'm talking about Fox Business, Fox News, Fox Network, uh, uh, Cheddar TV, CBS News. I mean, she's really pretty much all over the place. And we're very fortunate and very happy to have her here. So uh, she's going to basically cover and tell you guys a little bit about how and focusing on pattern trading and most importantly, how to develop her own 26-point rating system that's going to teach you how to trade the gaps. So you're going to learn a lot from her and how she basically teaches you how the institutions make money on the chart. So I don't want to take too much time away from her. She's going to be talking for about an hour and then uh, up until, um, you know, and then she'll t give you a little something to have access to her promo for all of you got to enjoy. But hopefully everybody got their pen and uh, paper handy because, uh, like I said, we're going to get started. So uh, let me just do a quick audio check. Uh, Melissa, are you there? Yes. Can you hear me? Let me just unmute her. There we go. Good morning. Can you hear me? Yeah, Melissa, I hear you fine. How are you doing? Great. How are you? I'm doing good. I'm doing good. So um, you could take over the screen and start sharing, and uh, we'll get started. Okay? Okay. Now, how do I do the screen thing? Help me out here. Uh, give me a second, and I'll be able to uh, – let me get that done. Hold on. All right, just give me one second. Sure. There you go. Are you able to do the screen? There you go. All right, perfect. Can you see me? Yep, go ahead. It's all yours. Great. Welcome, everyone. Hope everyone's having a great trading day today. Yesterday was crazy. So I thought what I'd do today is talk about my strategy, as Foster said, but then also talk about really volatility and then uh, go through the presentation that I had prepared for today and then kind of flip towards the end um, to some, some charts and where the market is at because the market had a steep fall off yesterday. In fact, the market gapped down Monday and I've been discussing this a lot in the last 24, 48 hours. One of the reasons the market fell was because everyone's scared about what's going to happen with this coronavirus. But as you see today, the market is holding, the market gapped up. So I think it's really important to, if you want to trade, that you need to know why you're trading. Obviously, everyone's doing this to make money, but I think you need to know what your time horizon is. Are you gonna be a fast trader where you're in and out quickly? Are you gonna be scalping? Are you gonna be doing options where you have a fixed time frame? And if so, is that gonna be for a couple of hours or a couple of days or a couple of weeks? And if you're someone that's a long-term investor in the market, that's another time frame as well. But all in all, the market is holding the uptrend, which I think is a good sign if you have money invested in a retirement account or a 401k, okay? So I can see where the questions are. If anybody has any questions as we're going along here this morning, you can just plop it in the question box and I will answer them as we go along, okay? So let's talk about making money trading. If you have questions, you can email me at melissa at thestockswoosh.com or you can call me at 929-3200-GAP. You can also follow me on Twitter, Facebook, YouTube, and Skype, and most of my TV appearances I try to put on Twitter before I'm on. Sometimes it's very last minute, and you can watch uh, previous appearances on YouTube. So 2020 is here. I cannot believe that it is almost March. 
but it's a leap year, as everyone knows. Extra day coming up this weekend, and March 1st is Sunday. The market's been very strong this year. Actually, for the stock swoosh, uh, it's been a very, very big start to the year. Mainly, I'm going to talk about this in the end of the webinar. One of the calls that I made this year was in a stock I'm sure you've heard of called Tesla. And that really pretty much has been a banging start for most of the people um, that are with me for 2020 because I called a lot of good entries on that stock. It's had a huge move. And so a lot of people capitalize on that when those moves are running up. Tesla is a good example, though, of just how much volatility you can get in a stock. Again, in Tesla, it was to the upside. Sometimes it's to the downside. Yesterday was to the downside in the market. But volatility is a good thing if you're an active trader. You may not like it if you're a long-term investor. But even if you're a long-term investor, you still have to read what's going on to know if you want to exit a position or if you want to enter a position, okay? When you're on your stairs to success, uh, trying to do this, uh, you know, you, you really have to be very, very focused. And again, I'm going back to yesterday because yesterday was a great example. If you weren't focused yesterday and made a mistake in some choices and trains, you could have gotten hurt. So focus is key. And I personally don't trade based on news. I trade by looking at the gap. I trade based on candlestick charts and technical analysis and gaps, which we're going to look at some charts today. And like I said, I'll flip then to, uh, to bring up my charts to see also what we did today. But I look at price action. It's reading price action that's happening in any particular stock. Or I say the market, and when I say the market, I mean the SPY, which is the ETF for the S&P. I often have to talk about the Dow on television, the diamonds, the DIA is the ETF for that. But I really don't uh, hold a lot of weight in the diamonds because of the fact that it's only 30 stocks in that component. So I do prefer to look at the QQQs or the SPY if I'm looking at market and if I'm trying to determine market direction on any particular day, okay? But one thing that you need to know is that you can do specific stocks and I prefer to do things that are on their own without the market, okay? And right now things are rallying, that's true, but we shorted Tull, Tull Brothers, which was a short today. It was a little baby one, but it was a good short today, even though the market did rally and is rallying, okay? I started out trading in 2008, and I didn't know what I was doing when I started either. I uh, did one class ever in my life in trading, and that was it, and it taught me the basics of technical analysis, which was a good foundation for me. So I believe that if you've been doing this for a long, long time, or if you're just brand new, you can learn it. And you can gain the skill set. The most important thing, thing, though, to me is the skill set. Because I only do gaps, and I've been focused on, on that now for 12 years, I'm very good at what I do. I don't jump around. I don't do anything different. I only do one strategy. It is a strategy that I personally, myself, created. Um, and not only do I do it, I teach the class, and I just live it and breathe it. So when you're doing something for 12 years, you, even though you say, well, that's not a long time. Some people have been trading for 30, 25 years. When you're only doing one thing, you get really, 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 really good at it. So I think the problem with traders and where they fail is that they quit um, and they don't stay on top of the strategy long enough. Now, that doesn't mean that every strategy works. Some strategies don't work. But I think sticking with something is very, very important. You do have to find a niche and you do have to find what that one specific thing is that you want to focus on. But for me... I get ready in the morning, in the pre-market. I'm going to go over what a gap is when I pull up a chart here. But in the pre-market, that's where I determine what stocks I want to do. That's how I knew toll was good today. I saw toll in the pre-market today. It was gapping down. And I used my system and applied my method, even before the market opened, to determine what stocks I wanted to trade and in what direction. So the prep work that I do before 9.30 helps me make money on the live day. If I don't like anything before 9.30, then I'm not doing anything on that particular day. And you can look actually at night for gaps. If, you, if you're in a different time zone, maybe you're in California, you want to look at what earnings are reporting after 4 o'clock. That's better for you. For me, I like to look at stuff in the morning. I'm up very, very early, and I can start looking at stuff as early as 7, 7.30 in the morning. But all the preparation that I do before I trade helps me make more money on the live day. And it's rare that I would trade all day. I prefer to trade the morning, but sometimes when things are running, or again, if there's, um, if you've got the market with you, if the market's power trending with the position that you're in, I will hold something through, or if it's an option. So again, it's the beginning of the year, it's still very early on in the year. If you didn't have a good year in 2019, 
it just you got to move forward you got to let it go if you haven't had a good start to 2020 you need to move forward you've got plenty of time left in the year to change your attitude start to think more positive about what you're doing and change what you're doing a lot of people are scared of change i live in manhattan there's change all the time uh it's i'll tell you a story i walked i've been living at, uh, where i'm at now for over eight years and i tell you restaurants liquor stores grocery stores they come and go in new york like that there was a, was a grocery store next door walked by the other day gone closed up closed shop went under I mean, I was almost surprised. I said, oh my God, this place is gone. And there it was one day, gone the next. Change happens all the time and you, and you have to embrace it. Change doesn't have to be a bad thing, but if you're not constantly, constantly moving forward and embracing the change that occurs, some of the change is change that you create yourself and some of the change is change that happens that you don't anticipate. But you still have to be willing to accept that change is, is part of training. And so that's why you also have to accept the fact that if you follow a structure and system, it doesn't mean that every single trade that you take works. Sometimes I take trades and they lose. But you have to have a system where more trades are winners than are losers if you want to make money be successful. That's common sense. But it doesn't mean you change what you're doing because you take one trade that loses. Okay? And again, you don't shift necessarily willy-nilly back and forth in something just because of something like the coronavirus virus and I'll, and I'll bring up the market in a minute here but look at your goals look at your journey look at how you're going to achieve them you've got plenty of time left in the year again 10 more months left in 2020 I think it's going to be a really great year I still think it's going to be a great year for the market if you want to do this and work for yourself for me, I just trade out of my home. You can do this anywhere in the world. You do not have to be in New York, which is a great thing. You can be in a different time zone. I have people all over the world that are in my trading room. So the nice thing about it is that you can do this and work for yourself. So you have to know again, are you doing this to save some extra money on the side or is this something you wanna eventually do as a full-time career? I would say if that's what you want to do, then you have to transition yourself. So don't quit your day job today. If you want to do this, set your goals, know your time horizon, and maybe your goal is that you want to be a professional trader by the end of 2020, all right? Set realistic goals for yourself so that you can achieve them. And again, so you can constantly be positive and move forward, okay? Any questions so far? So anyways, there's many different types of traders. Many, 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 many. What type of trader are you? I think it's good to know that. Are you a swing trader? Are you an options trader? Are you a day trader? And also, what can you afford to risk per trade? And you may have a different amount per trade if you're doing an overnight trade versus a day trade. Your risk may be different. I think it's okay to have a larger risk for an overnight trade actually than a day trade. Also, what size account can you open? There are proprietary day trading accounts. There are retail day trading accounts. There are cash options accounts. I'm not a broker, but it's always important to get with a broker, ask the right questions. There's been a lot of consolidation in the industry this year, and I think you're going to see more of that. It's benefited traders in the sense that commissions have been reduced or are, are completely gone away for some different brokerage firms. So there's definitely a lot of opportunity for traders to take advantage of the consolidation that we've been seeing in the brokerage business. But it's important for you to know which category you fit into first. All right, and then, like I said, set the proper expectations for yourself. For example, if you have a $5,000 proprietary day trading account, you should not be risking $2,000 in a trade. You shouldn't be risking 40% of your account in one trade. That doesn't make any sense, let alone your whole account. All right, so you, say you would take an options trade and risk 5,000, you have 5,000 in your account. That wouldn't make any sense because what if the trade loses? You'd have no more money in your account, all right? So it's important to set your risk based on your starting capital or the amount of capital that you have in your trading account not just in the margin you're getting which varies from broker to broker depending on the type of your account but it's important base it off your cash and if you need advice on that or if you want to know what i think of that you know you can always email me or call me and ask me but before you even begin to risk money in the market at all okay you should have a strategy that you follow. This is very, very important. It's one of the reasons I'm successful because I just do this one thing. It's also the reason that um, I'm very intuitive about reading things like the market and stocks because I'm so focused on that one thing. It just becomes part of you. It's like riding a bike or, or playing a sport or, or playing an instrument, okay? And although I don't think it's necessary that you have a mentor, I didn't have a mentor 
when I started out, I don't think it's necessary, but I think it's helpful. And if someone had said to me, you know, given me the choice to have a mentor back 12 years ago, I would have said, yes, I really, really would like one. But, you know, at the time that I started out, and even now today, there's very little out there about gaps that is accurate. And that was true in 2008, and it's true even today in 2020. And so I knew that I wanted to focus on gaps. I knew there was not that much information out there about it. And I knew what information was out there was incorrect, meaning that you couldn't take it and use it to make money. And ultimately, that is your goal. Your goal is to make money, and you have to make money. And while you may have a learning curve, while you come and you're learning and you're taking trades, you still should be making money along the way. Doesn't mean you're not gonna make a fat finger mistake here or there, but the goal has to be to be positive, all right? So talking about a couple different types of traders and what you can do. If you have a margin account, which is what you're gonna to need to day trade, in, out, in, out, like toll, like we day traded the toll today. So a margin account is different than a cash account. So. Are margin accounts when you're doing something like tall, is that a cash position? No, day trading, again, what I do in the trading room, is done with a margin account. If you want to know how much margin you need, you have to contact a broker. On average, at a retail place, it's four to one for day trades. And at prop firms, on average, it's about 10 to one, just so you know. So they can ride from two to one, four to one, or even 10 to one margin. So for, one, for every dollar that you have in cash, for example, in a prop account, you get 10 to 1 buying power or margin. But you've got to be flat by the end of the day, by 4 o'clock. Okay? You can't hold overnight in something with that type of margin. Day trading is done between 9.30 and 4 o'clock Eastern Time. You're not outright buying the stock and holding it overnight. Okay? That's not what this is. You, you, you're not buying it. So the cost of the position you're taking for the risk isn't $31,000 if, if that's what it costs for you to take the, take the trade in margin. That's not what you'd lose if the trade wouldn't work. The amount of risk that you take is the difference between the entry and the stop when I call it in the live room or if you do it yourself. And we'll discuss that when I show the trades. But it's very, very important. I think a lot of people that don't understand day trading, our margin, our buying power, and how it works is you don't need, like I said, thirty, sixty, a hundred thousand dollars in cash to put up as risk necessarily to take even good sized positions if you have an account a margin. So the golden gap system, which is my system, can be traded with any size day trading account. You can go to a prop firm or you can go to a retail firm. That's totally, totally up to you. All right. So I say check out a lot of places, check out their platform fees, check out their uh, commission fees or if they have any. But the most important thing is to learn first right? and then start with small size and then even start on a demo if you want, if you've never traded in your life. And if you have an account already, you got to find out if you can day trade. You also have to find out if you can short stocks. Uh, that's important too. We do a lot of shorts. You need a level two and you need charts. And then the pre-market data and the post-market data, which is how I see the gap. There are no penny stocks traded with my system or even called in the live room. I don't. I think that they're, they're worthless to trade and way too risky. And I'm looking for stocks that are companies that you would know. Netflix, Apple, Toll Brothers, KBH. You've heard of the companies that we're trading. They have millions and millions and millions of shares in volume. And those are the ones I focus on because I'm focusing on volatility and momentum. And you're not going to get that kind of playthrough in stocks that are just too dirt cheap. And it's too risky to take too much size in that. And you have to end up taking way, 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 way too much size in order to be able to make a couple thousand dollars a day if that's what you want to do. And it should be your goal or even a couple thousand a week. But all stocks reviewed in the system have volume and are actively traded in the price range varies. So they could be... $10 a share, or it could be something, like I said, like Netflix, $377 a share. But most stocks that we do are in the mid price range, okay? And with options, you can trade options with a cash account, where you would not have a margin account. You wouldn't have to have the margin account requirements. Whatever cash you risk in the trade, if you risk $500, that's the most you're going to lose if the trade doesn't work. And it has nothing to do with the price of the stock. The price of the option has something to do with the price of the stock. We're going to go over um, a tr couple of trades at the end here that were options that I called as well. So you can use my system for options. And if you 
are concerned about margin requirements, you may want to do options. Options can be very, very fruitful. They can be very, very lucrative, okay? But you've got to get the momentum within the time period of the option. And also sometimes you have to wait 24, 48 hours, a couple of days for them to go. One of the nice things I like about day trading is that the stocks go quick and I know by the time I go to bed at night, how I did with my day trading. I know that I booked this much money. I know that's where I'm at by four o'clock. You know, because again, you have to be flat. And sometimes you could take an option and you don't know where it's gonna go and you're still in it overnight, okay? But ultimately your goal is to make money. And like I said, you can do it from home. Any questions here so far? So why do people find day trading so hard? Is it because the market is so volatile? Is it because there's days like yesterday scares about different things economic stuff scares in the world uh, no i don't think that's why people find trading hard i think people find trading hard because they really don't have the right knowledge and don't know what to focus on they think that they know what to focus on so they focus on that one thing but they're not making money so really the thing that they're focusing on isn't providing the proper route to the cash okay well, it's good to look at something you can say, oh, well, there's the 20 pair moving average and the eight pair moving average, do, 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 do. It doesn't mean that that's going to direct you towards where the money is, okay? Ultimately, the only way to make money in a trade is if you're in the trade, in the stock, if you're in it before the movement happens and you got to be in it in the right direction, okay? So there are many reasons. However, well, one big reason really is a lack of focus. And that's one of the reasons that people find it hard and a lack of clarity. Traders are often second guessing themselves, taking trades, killing them, then taking them again or taking them in the opposite direction. And you can't do that. You need to have conviction to trade well and make money. I, I call it 100% conviction. As of 100% conviction, boom. Like yesterday, I did not short this market. I, I didn't. Um, I may have changed my mind in a couple of days or 24 hours or a week, but I didn't short the market yesterday and I didn't have any conviction, conviction that it would follow through today. All right. So I think that training with conviction, which you could also call confidence, you could call it confidence too, um, comes from my knowledge. It comes from my knowledge base. So it's confidence, conviction, knowledge, and focus. And all of these things are things that everybody should do. At, you know, whether you've been trading for one day or 10 years. So this was one that we did, this was yesterday. Was this yesterday? Yeah. Um, AAL. So this was actually this plot. No, we didn't do this yesterday, did we? Or was the other day? This was the airline. This plummeted. So this was, gosh, I mean, honestly, 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 this was one of the ones that was just absolutely, absolutely crazy. Here, let me pull up the chart. Oh, there it is. Can everybody see my chart? Actually, let's look at, yeah, let's look at AL. So again, while I don't have 100% conviction that the market is lower, there are certain sectors that are, that are really getting sold off. One of them is airlines. Here's AAL. One of them is UAL. Gosh, look at this going here now. This just this, these things look like they're going to zero. And the other thing is CCL. Just looks like it's going to zero too. And RCL. So there are certain sectors that are being affected by this news. Now, again, you could be in the shorting in the last three days. You could be in them as overnights. Oh, you can't see the chart? Can you see the chart or not? Let me blow it up. Can anybody see the chart? Some people can. No charts. Oh, shoot. I thought I could flip back and forth. Um, this is, I'm looking, I am, I'm looking at a day chart of AAL. Can you see it? Let me see if I can do this. No chart. I'm going to stop share and reshare it. Hold on. Stop. 
then I'm gonna You see it now? No, I lost the chat. Okay, yeah, I guess with this, I'm not familiar with this Zoom. I think if, uh, and to go back to the PowerPoint, then I'll have to stop and go back, stop and go back. I think that's what, that's why. Okay, anyways, we're good. So this is AAL. So let's, I was talking before, but I do gaps. Let's go over what a gap is now that I have this chart up. And then I'll go back and stop it and go back to the PowerPoint. I didn't realize that with the Zoom, but that's fine. Anyways, here was Friday. So anyways, this stock, this is AAL, closed. This is before all the news came out and everything. Uh, this closed at 27.82 on Friday. Boom. This is Monday morning. Opened up here 25.98. Okay. So that is a gap down. So where when a stock closes at one price and opens at a different price, that's a gap. It could be a gap up, it could be a gap down. In this case, there was a gap down. Why? Because the closing price on Friday was higher than the open on Monday. Got it? Now, what we, what we saw in the last two days was the follow through of the selling. Now, let me show you a gap up here. This was 210. This is back on 210. AAL closed at 28.79 and opened at 29.06. So this closed here at one price, opened at a different price, because the price that it opened was higher than the previous day's close, it gapped up. So what I do is look in the morning to determine, number one, what stock I wanna trade, and number two, do I wanna buy it or sell it, or basically short it, okay? But I determine that based on the gap. Now, how do you know that this is gapping? Well, let's go here, that was 224. I think I can flip back and forth from different charts. I just think I can't flip back and forth. Does everyone see this is 224? This is the 15 minute in AAL. So this was 8 a.m. Eastern time. Market isn't open yet. So I saw this. Let me get rid of all this. All of that is I'm eating my breakfast and drinking my coffee. 8 a.m. to 9 a.m. Market isn't open yet. AAL isn't open yet, but it's gapping. How do I know? Because I can see it. I can see it right there. Here's where we closed the previous day. Again, that was Friday, 27.95. And I can see in the morning, it's already down here. Snug as a bug in a rug, around 26.40. And that it was moving around around 26.20, 26.30. So let's go back here. It opened and sold off. And it's continued to sold off. And I'll squish this here for the last few days. Anyways, long story short, I teach people, and I do it myself every morning before I trade, how to look at that trading action and actually determine that one, is this gonna to continue to sell off on the live day or is it going to rally? Because the only way you can short something if it's gapping down and make money is if it continues to sell off. If it's not going to, if it's gonna rally, then you don't wanna short it or consequently you could go long it but I didn't do that here. This was a short. Uh, I just saw a hand thing. I don't know what that means. Is, does that mean somebody had a question? I don't know what that means. Um, all right, let me take this off. Now let's go over here to the market. The market is trying to hang on. So this is the QQQs. Here was Friday in the Qs, gap down, didn't sell off Monday, gapped up on Tuesday, sold off like a banshee, fell into the close, gapped up today, 1234 Eastern time, we're holding. So you have some short covering here today in the market and you have some buyers that are stepping in here in the market as well. Here's the market. I mean, we're strong as a rock. So again, I think a lot of people are wondering if the market's gonna sell off all the way down here or is the market gonna hold here, rally, flip around, make new highs. Today, there's no play in this really here for me. I did not call any longs today here in this. This is just doing whatever it's doing and I'll wait and see where this goes tomorrow in the gap. But on Monday morning when I woke up, I go back to 224, 
putting back this information here, this was way, way, 8 a.m., again, Monday morning, I saw that the queues were down. So AAL was down, the queues were down, a lot of things were down, this was Monday morning. So I look at this and see it to determine, again, what's going to happen here. Is this going to go down? Is it going to go up? Because again, the only way you're gonna make money in the market is if you're in something in the right direction, okay? That's very, 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 very important. It sounds like trading 101, but a lot of people wanna do trickery, trickery things and they get hurt. And let's go to Tesla here because I think Tesla, which just was a great call for me this year, Tesla was one of these ones where people were short Tesla back here earlier in the year in January stock continued higher people were still short continued higher and just broke out stock ran up unbelievable i've almost never seen anything like this to be honest with you so this stock here closed at 650 and within two days ran up to 968. this was a huge call for all of my subscribers and myself it was a big move i've almost really never quite seen anything like that but if you were in this short here, you lost, okay? And there were people short in there, all right? So you gotta get somebody in the right direction. The gap tells me you can't go long every bullish gap up and you can't short every gap down, that's true, but I try to find the good ones and that's what I try to do. Now let's just look at toll really, oh, toll. Oh, this broke. This, this continued. Wow, look at that. I like to get out in the morning. 39 was the target. Look what it did. Wow. Toll was a snail today. T toll went to 37.89. That was a good. That was a good read on that. So I rent toll was a good short today. Got out in the morning. Just wanted to be done for the day, and I had this thing. But look at this. It went boom. Nice move on toll. And really quickly, we'll look at the KBH. This was wild. This dropped, went down, flipped around, came down again. Okay, all right, so I'm gonna go back to the PowerPoint here. Let me just stop this and then I'm gonna go back and then I'm gonna turn it over again. But anyways, that's what I do because I'm looking for, okay, can everybody see the PowerPoint again? I'm looking for the, the gap. And that's what you come and learn from me, how to find the gap and how to determine if it's long or short and also how to determine which stock to focus on, like the toll. We didn't do anything else but toll today as far as the day trades. And as far as options trades, I'm not going to go back uh, to the charts unless I have time at the end. I want to finish up the PowerPoint here, but I called uh, DPZ. The stock looks great. Oh, no PowerPoint? You can't see it? Can you see the PowerPoint or not? Can everybody see the slide? It's a clock. It says 30 minutes. Some people say yes, some people say no. Okay. Maybe refresh the one dude that said a no. Because everybody else can see it. Okay. Anyways, for me, I like to focus on the first 30 minutes, first hour. Well, like if I had stayed with the toll today, it dropped more than another buck. So if you really want to trade and follow things through, if you want to, you're, you, you can do that. You totally can. But for me, I like to be in that quick. And then if I have options trades on, I may watch those later. But, you know, the nice thing about day trading is there's no overnight risk. I mean, I just like that. You're in, you're out. Like I said, you know exactly how much you make. It's the quick trades. You're in in several minutes and you're out. And I, I, I mean, I, I like that. That's fun to me. But day trading is definitely not investing. It's a way of producing income. You're chunking it out. And if you come from an investing mentality, that's not what day trading is. If you come from an investing mentality, you're better off doing swing trades, which you can use my system for, or options trades, whether you do them for a couple of weeks or a couple of months out. I mean, if you're someone that can't make the fast trades, then you really need to, to look to do options or swing trades. I like to do both because it's, it's, it's the same strategy. And some days we get a good mover in an option and we don't have any day trades or vice versa. So I find that, it, you know, it keeps me busy. 
but set your goals. If you're trying to make, and do this as a living, and make around 250 grand a year, your goal is what? 20 grand a month. And, and just to wrap your head around that, take 20 grand a month divided by per week. Four, four weeks average in a month. Then take the week, divide it by five days, okay? I don't call myself a scalper because I call myself a momentum trader. To me, scalpers are traders that take some, like 20,000 shares and it moves like 10 cents. That's like a scalper to me. So I, I don't consider myself a scalper. I consider myself a momentum trader. I'm looking for momentum to come into the stock. And then I, whether the momentum could come in in five minutes, it could come in in 15 minutes, it could come in in 30 minutes, it could come in an hour. But I'm looking for a move, a dollar or more. To me, that's not a scalper. A scalper to me is someone that takes a large amount of size and gets out, for, and, and gets out before it even turns around. Like if you have three red bars, and you're in something short you wouldn't even like if you wouldn't even get three red bars for example like if you had one red bar two red bars and then and then a green bar a scalper would exit if it was eight cents they would exit do you follow what i'm saying like that's not how i trade so to me i guess that's how i define a, a scalper me i'm looking for momentum does that make sense 50 cents 70 cents a dollar that's 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 my style it's momentum and typically, you get the largest moves into the first hour of the day. Now, in the case of Toll today, though, that really broke late. That was a nice read on that because there were people in there that were trying to go long that, and I knew it was a short. So that was a good read on that gap. Anyways, here's the AAL. So this was the one that we did on Monday, okay? So stock closed here, stock gap down, open, dropped, okay? This was the one that we looked at earlier, okay? Here is the 15 minute, five minute of the, um, of the AAL. It's a five minute chart. So this is a previous day, it was behind the clock, stock gap down, open dropped, rallied. You could have shorted it here. You could have shorted it here. You got the drop. And so this was 224, just so you know, this was the first day. That was day number one on the Monday, okay? So here was the trade call. The entry was 25.42, stop was 25.75. This was a really nice tight stop. You could have sized yourself for roughly 30 cents, 35 cents, okay? An advanced trader risk is 1980, was the initial position with 6,000 shares. Then it did a confirmation, I call it an ad. This is, a, this is a, an advanced concept, but just work with me here. The ad was 25.50. Okay, because I, I, I would confirm to me it was going to continue lower. This was a short. So doubled up, 12,000 shares, stops this 25.85, and then the average price, 25.46, and then it ran down to 25. This was AAL. This had a bigger move the, the second day. We didn't do it. But a really nice, just flush in this occurred on Monday okay and actually 40 50 cent move is a good move in a stock like this on any given day typically I'm looking for a dollar but sometimes you can't control where the setup is I look from tip to toe so from tip to toe up in here this is around 26 and the target was 25 while this did end up eventually breaking 25 the next day again you have to look at the target I go over targets in the class as well, but that was a nice one. Now, what if you didn't take an advanced risk? What if you had a smaller risk? Risk 258 bucks, 1,200 shares. You could have made $516. Very nice trade. Very nice move. $500 a day is $2,500 a week. That's 10 grand a month. I mean, that is, you know, that's making it. That's making it trading. And this was only with initially 600 shares, and with the ad, it was 1,200. And again, this is, was not an expensive stock. Now, the other one we did was EXAS. Okay, this was the one that we did yesterday. This fell off a planet. This closed here, this gap down. This was earnings, fell. Okay, so this was Tuesday's gap. Here was the 15 minute in EXAS. Stock closed here, gap down, fell. Okay, so this trade, entry was 88.30. Stock was a buck. Stock was 89.30. 
Risk was 2,500 shares was $2,500. Exit was at 87.25. Again, I play the morning. I typically look for a dollar. Target was around 87. Drop, boom, took it. Got a buck out of it. Nice trade, profit with 26.25. But I will tell you that, again, I didn't anticipate the market falling off of planning yesterday. If I had known that, I would have held this or retaken it. But this ended up going like to 84 or something. It was crazy. So, but beautiful move. But when you trade as well, you should also have goals. Like if you're risking $500 a day, your goal is 500. If you're risking 1,000, your goal is 1,000. If you're risking 2,000, your goal is 2,000, follow me. So your risk, you should try to turn over your risk at least one time per day. I always enter in the morning between 9.30 and 10 a.m. Eastern time. If I don't take a trade by 10 a.m., I'm not taking it. It's not right for me. Here is the beginner. Again, 250 shares, if you can take odd lots. Risk $250, could have made $262.50. So again, you know, very, very reasonable. You're playing the move, target was 87, take it, get out. Take it, get out, that's all that you do, okay? Any other questions here so far? So that was, today was told, yesterday was the XES and Monday was the AAL. But literally, you could have shorted a million things uh, yesterday with the market, but you would have been entering late trades with the market because the market didn't break till late yesterday. It did not break out of the game. I think that when you look at trading, you have to say, well, high odds. Again, I go back to the conviction. Is it high odds that something's going to work in your favor as a short or as a long? That's where my rating system tells me what's going to work and what's not going to work. Okay, so if I rate a gap and I, and I have a 26 point rating system, if it rates 20 points, then I'm looking at it and I'm saying, okay, 20 points or more, it's going to go in the direction of the gap. At a 17, 18, 19, it's 50, 50 chance of working or failing, then that's not good enough odds for me. So the 26 points puts the odds in my favor. Okay. Uh, Ashok wants to see a loss. I have to think what the last loss was. We didn't have any losers this week. Um, I have to think. What did we do last week? I have to think about it. I'll have to think about it, Ashok. We've been, I've been kind of on a roll here. I do have losers, though. I said that. I'd say if, if I call 10 trains... I'd figure seven, eight are gonna work and or two or three are gonna be losers. So that's what I would get I my my win loss ratio is anywhere between seventy and eighty percent in any given day, any given week. Like this week it's a hundred percent, but that's not every week. I'll have to think about what the last loser was. Uh, I I have no trailing stop, I have no mental stop. This is the stop. It's a hard stop. Boom. Let me go back to this. Um, this one here this is a one minute chart AAL there's no mental stop the stop is in, it's a limit order if the stock would have hit 25.85 it would have been out with a loss okay so no, mental stops don't work um, because the fact is that stocks move very quickly um, and there's no mental stop that's going to take you out of something if this wants to reverse in seconds. And that absolutely can happen. As long as I've ever traded, I always use a limit order stop. I mean, sometimes I'll take a trade and I really, really like it. Um, the toll. Let me see if I have the toll in here. Let me see if I have the toll one minute. No, I didn't put it in. I'm sorry. I was going to go back and show you the toll. Because the toll today almost stopped us out, but it didn't. But if it had, it might have reset up, and then I might have retaken it. In other words, if it had stopped us out, and if I had taken a stop, looking at the what it did, I might have retaken it. But that's what it is. It's better to take the stop, retake it, I call it a retake, than it is to just let something go against you. There's A mental stop is nothing. That's it's baloney. So it's a real limit order stop. All right, what are we talking about here? Anyways, looking at high odds. So again, profits are key. Doesn't mean every trade works, but you have to have more winners than you have losers, okay? And that's why booking money is important too. So I could have held on to 
every trait virtually that I just showed you longer. But what if they would not have continued? What if that would have been it? Do you know what I'm saying? When you, you have to be in a, like, I'm in a very structured format with myself. Like I do it and take it and do it and take it. And I'm in a structure. Like I'm in a, I'm in a routine. Okay. It's not about, you're never going to get out of every short at the low. And you're never going to get out of every long at the high. And sometimes it just happens, but that's not all the time. And that's not your goal. So it's very important to book money. And when you're up one amount that you risk, that's a good day. Okay, if you decide you want to go back into it, like you might have gone back into to told today, that's a different story. But if it would stop and you took it in the morning and you made money and then you would have taken it again, if it hadn't reset up and fallen all day, you would have been stopped out. I just think it's so much easier to make money in the morning and stop. Uh, my share size varies from my stop size, which varies. Like you saw the one was 30 some cents, the other one was a dollar. So you can't just take like a thousand shares of everything or whatever. It has to do with the difference between the entry and the stop, which I call in the room. And if you want to try out of the live trading room, you can email me for Thursday and Friday this week. Email me at melissaatthestockswish.com for a trial. You can be in the room. But anyways, trading is a great job for yourself. I've been doing it a long time. I do enjoy working for myself. There's no way I could ever work for anyone ever, ever again. I also like having my weekends free. I like having my nights free. I like that the market closes at four. So think about what you're doing this year. Um, it's time to get to work. If you're trading and you're not making money, uh, you might be working very, very hard, quite frankly, at losing. I know a lot of people do, which, which is insane. Trading is supposed to be intrinsically easy. For me, it's easy many, many days. Some days are hard. Some days are hard. Why? Something happens unexpectedly that I didn't plan. But I very quickly can get over it because I'm a very focused person. I'm very driven. And then when something happens that I don't anticipate, I just become like really hyper focused and I dig in. And sometimes that I end up even making even more money after that thing happens. So, I mean, honestly, it's, that's my personality. But either way, you, you have to be on point with your strategy, on point with your risk assessment, and on point with what you're doing. I don't ever trade. I don't trade all day. It's rare that I do, and if I happen to be trading till four o'clock, then I lost in the morning and I'm trying to come back. Those are difficult days. It doesn't happen that often, but I don't like it when it does. It's much, much easier to make morning and then money in the morning and just stop. The live trading room is $500 a month, but it's free if you uh, do the class this weekend. You cannot join the trading room separately, though, without taking my class. So there's no trading room membership separate. Everyone in the room is a student. I review things in the room like we talked today about the market, about gaps. I go over proprietary information in the room some days and we teach so you've got to have done the class and know what I'm doing. And the trade's set up really quickly. I mean, sometimes we're going to trade at 931. Um, anyways, really quickly, let's go over some options here quick. And then I'm going to dig up some losers for somebody that wanted me to talk about a loser. I'll, I'll look and see what was last week or the week before. This was Facebook. Um... Crap here, I thought I put it in here. Hold on, I'm trying to find it. Oh no, I put Tesla in here and Facebook later. Here's here, oh, here's a Tesla. Oh, this was this was back this was back last year. This was a Tesla. When it started breaking out. Yeah. This this started breaking out last year, then it rallied up, then it broke out in here in December. We caught it here at the beginning of this year, and then here was the rally up. This was just an unbelievable chart. So this was a start up Tesla started out the year and then just just rocketed from there. So on January 6th, I'll go back and show you the chart. I called two strikes, 450 and 455s in the Tesla. That was January 6th. Here. And then it went, boom. So I called the 450s and the 455s. The stock ran up almost to 500, okay? So this is just a normal bullish gap that I rated the gap using my system and it took, I went straight up. It literally, literally, literally went straight up. Now, sometimes I'll call options trades during the day. I called this in the afternoon. I saw that it was gonna gap up, follow through and run and that's what it did. Now, Facebook, I did call on Monday with the drop off. I sent this email out. I said, if Facebook breaks 201, this is valid, meaning do the trade. It was the 200 puts. I did not know on this day the market would tank yesterday. But actually, I thought this was a good exit on Monday. If you followed it through, though, on Tuesday, you made more money in this. 
cost of this on Monday was 270 because it did break. I sent this trade around 1035. 30 contracts was a risk of 7,800. You could have made 5,850. And if you took five contracts, which is like 500 shares, you could have made 975 bucks. This was taking it Monday and exiting it Monday. Return investment 75%. It's a good trade. But this did continue. This did fall all the way down, broke 196. So that was the exit here. I mean, I mean, again, I didn't anticipate the market falling here yesterday, but that was a nice move. So anyways, if, if you want to learn how to trade, you can do it and you can make money. I think that you, a lot of people just find it difficult because they don't know what to focus on. So I focus on my system. It's called the Golden Gap. The Golden Gap system is a 26 point professional bearish gap rating system. The purpose of the system is to help you evaluate which gap to trade each morning using a checklist. This checklist tells you what to trade, when, and in what direction. The 26-point checklist predicts directional bias in a stock. That's how I make money. That's what you learn from me. That's the meat and potatoes of what I do. That's the prep work that I do in the morning. One strategy is all you need to be successful in the market and make money. You don't need a general overall broad-based view of the market. You don't need to read fundamentals. You don't need to know any of that stuff. If you like doing it, fine, but it's not going to make you money, okay? I read price action and that's how I do it. And it's the price action and gaps. And price is happening right now live. And that's how you have to capitalize on it as an individual trader. So if you have time to trade in the morning, and if you have a passion for the market, and if you want to work from home, and if you're interested in anything I said today, you can email me at melissa at the stock swoosh.com. My class for this next month is this weekend. So my class is called the Golden Gap Course. It's February. I put February 28th, but it's the 29th. <laughs> Just forgot it's a leap year. It's Saturday, or no, is it the 28th? No, it is the 29th. It's Saturday and Sunday. <laughs> this weekend, the Golden Gap course, tuition is $69.99, and I'm doing a special, which is good until Friday, uh, that includes the trading room free to the end of the year. So this is a big deal. So the offer ends Friday. Class is the 29th and, and March 1st, and it's in New York. Class is online. Oh, there. He, the guy... Uh, the chat dude put in the, the special in there. Um, let me just see. What did we do last week? All right, everybody, uh, let me get a little chat back if everybody can hear me okay. Just want to make sure that everything went nice and smooth. All right, good, good, good. Thanks, Kevin. Thanks, Bonnie. Thanks. So anyway, let's give a round of applause. Melissa, thank you so much for coming here today. It has been great. She gave you a nice little promotion. Hopefully everybody learned a lot regarding about her success in, in trading and, you know, talking a little bit about day trading and more or less uh, her style of trading and following the volatile markets today. And let me tell you, the markets are definitely very volatile. But um, you got our promotion page up there. And uh, like I said, you could also email her if you have any questions. We're just happy to have her again. Now, um, I want to bring my next guest here at Cybertrain University. It's John 